Okay, I've got the smart controller here all set up and ready to be installed and I've got the Intermatic timer here that we're going to be taking out. The first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure the power is off. All right, with my multimeter in hand, we're going to set it to AC voltage, which is that squiggly line with a V. And we're going to touch one lead to the ground and one lead to the line in. And we're getting zero volts. And just to be sure, let's make sure we're getting zero volts that way too. We're good. We can start dismantling this controller. We just need to grab some tools to do so. And uh, I'm not going to stop the camera. We're just going to get going. It's already raining, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll start by taking the wires out. These wires are traveling to the solenoid of the valve that's over there that's being used as a master valve. But in this case, it's the only valve to the system. There used to be a second zone in this backyard, but as you can see, there's no grass back here. Just a couple of palm trees. So I don't have any intentions on saving this controller, so I just take the screws all the way out so I can pull them out of the wires without messing up the wires too much. We'll go ahead and remove these two screws here. Actually, before I remove the other bottom screw, let me go ahead and loosen this up, because if I loosen up all the screws before I do this, it'll make doing this process a little bit harder. So we'll get that one off. They really put this one on. They beat the hell out of it. All right, and it don't want to move. So we'll get our hammer, AKA channel locks, and we'll have to beat the crap out of this. I can tell you right now, I'm definitely not reusing that. I know I have better lock nuts on my truck than these plastic piece of crap lock nuts. It makes sense as to why this thing's all torn up. Oh, can't forget the ground screw either. Gotta get that one out too. All right, with all my screws out, now out of our way, we can get the last screw out of the bottom and the final screw out of the top and we'll be able to take the controller right off the wall here. And just like that. Oh, I guess I didn't take this one all the way out. And there we go, Moser Sprinkler Systems. It had a good run. But we're going to a smart irrigation system, so we're gonna use this. And of course, I would spill out my little screws here. Make sure I don't lose those. We'll get to the sensor later. Now I know something's not gonna work out here. So, we're gonna run a new piece of conduit for the wires that go to that valve. We're not gonna reuse this because this doesn't line up to the new controller, the holes are further apart. In order for me to use what we have right here, I'd have to drill a hole right here and that's not gonna happen. So we'll take this piece of conduit off the wall and we'll put a new piece on and we'll use a better connector than this. And that's how we usually find them. We'll use butt connectors and put a regular piece of wire on there. That's trash. All right, now we're left with just the power coming in, which is exactly what we need to get the controller mounted to the wall. I'm going to use something that you might not be used to seeing for my level. That's right, I'm gonna use my phone. Your phone has a level on it, you can use it. Check it out, actually. Use it with the lock button side. All right, went and did all that for no reason because I need to go get my drill set up. Now that we've got it working where I want it, I can, there we go. That's right where I want it. Yep. So here's my trick. I know that this screw hole has to go right there in the middle. I'm gonna measure down a little bit there. I wanna double check my level, as long as my level's not being a pain in the butt. All right, with the clock leveled with the level, we'll go ahead and sink our other two holes, and then our third hole down here. All right, so that top hole, I'm gonna come down just about this much, because I know that's where the hole's supposed to hit. All right, now with the four holes drilled, we'll go ahead and put the first screw in the top where we're gonna hang the uh, controller. Don't screw it all the way in, just screw it a little bit to the end there. We still need to be able to hook onto the, the controller. That might actually be in a little too far. No, go ahead and, all right, get the wires in there. There, that's on. My holes should line up for those. The screws are all in. The controller's on the wall, it's straight. The next step is to go get a lock nut for the power wire, because we're not gonna use those plastic ones, and I've got plenty of them in here. Here's one. So we'll go ahead and get that going. All right, there's no sense in leaving these wires super duper long, so I'm gonna cut them the same length as the rest of them. And then we'll strip them back using the number 14 on the wire strippers. I only wanna strip off like half an inch. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to cut back again. I don't wanna have to do that. An electrician once told me you always start with the ground. You always want to ground yourself first. So 
we're gonna put the ground nut on first. When you're putting on wire nuts, you wanna twist it enough to where you start to see the wires twist like that. That's how you know that that wire nut's not gonna come back out. So we'll go ahead and shove that one right in the back there. The next one you wanna wire is the common wire or the neutral. Ground, neutral, then hot. So we'll go ahead and get the neutral capped off. Wait for the wires to twist. We know it's tight. Then we can go ahead and stick that one in the back there. And then finally, the hot wire. The wire carrying the voltage to the controller. All right. Now I can go get that cover and a screwdriver and put it right back over this. All right, put the cover in hand. See, once you stick those wire nuts in there, and I tried, and I don't know if you noticed it, but I stuck them behind this so that it would stay back there and out of my way. And I knew that I would have to put two more in there, so I kept stuffing them towards the back as I put them together. And now when I put the cover on, it's real simple. I don't have to fight with it. You shouldn't fight with it anyway. You shouldn't be trying to cram wires in there. If you're trying to cram wires in there, then cut them back like you saw me do. A lot of wires crammed into a small space can heat up and cause problems like melting. So don't do that. All right, I'm gonna wipe my face real quick. This is about 105 degrees in South Florida and I'm feeling all of it. Now I gotta run back to my truck, grab some conduit, connectors, a little bit of wire, and we're gonna get it connected to that solenoid over there and run that new piece of conduit over there. We're gonna go down and then I'm gonna need to get another thing out of my truck. I don't think I have one in here. Yes, I do. All right, so, yep. That's what we're gonna do. All right, oh, need one more part. Need a bushing, because the controller comes with a three quarter inch hole in it, and I don't need a three quarter inch hole. I need a bushing to cover that up. I know I got a, oh, there's one. All right, with the bushing on there, now we can attach our connector. And then that's when I connect my funny pipe, or funny pipe, <laughs> it's hot out here, guys. It's when I connect my liquid tight, so I can get an idea of how long I need it to be. And then I can figure out how long the wire needs to be. So we're gonna go right there. We're gonna come right through here with the rest of these. And then probably go right to there. All right. And if you don't got funny pipe cutters, guys, I'm not kidding, this works. I usually have a much sharper pair though. There you go. I was gonna use funny pipe cutters for that, but that'll do just fine. I'm probably gonna have to trim that anyway. So we'll go ahead and disconnect this. We'll push our wire through it, splice it on both ends. That comes out the other end there. For this trick, you just score the wire. Score the wire a little bit. Bend it, pull it back to get to this string. Pull the string back. Remember where you scored the wire? Cut that off and then peel back. And now you have perfectly usable wire. And I do this before I connect it, so when you see it come out of there, you don't see this. You just see the wires coming out. All right, everything's nice and tight. We can start putting our straps back on. I'm gonna do that first so I can get it straight, and I'll probably put a strap right back where it was right here, and then we'll figure out our connection for this in a second. But before I get there, let me start drilling holes for the connector. Nothing wrong with this one, so we're gonna reuse it. Put it directly in line with where it was before. I use short screws because I don't want to poke through anybody's water pipes in their house. Some people run water pipes in walls and don't explain to others how they did it. All right, I dropped one, so that's helpful. Get all of our extra material out of our way. All right, now we got a clean slate. So we'll start trimming wires up so we can install this connector, the solenoid cover instead of the PVC thing they had there before. Same trick. All right, with that stripped all the way back like that, we can go ahead and cut off the excess. And I'm going to use red and white, which is my typical colors for any time I'm doing a master valve or a single zone system. I realize that the rest of those wires are gonna pop out on the other end. I'm about to clip them because if they ever need to run a new wire, they just have to run a new wire. I don't have room in this uh, conduit to save them, actually realizing something else right now that I need to plan for is the fact that I'm gonna to wanna to pull these back a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this to here and then trim these to here. So when I butt connect everything and pull it through the other side, it's not just bunched up inside of there. All right, 
before I go too far. I think I did go too far. Forgot about a few parts here. So let's see how I get myself out of this one. And this is where this job outside of the box thinking comes in real handy on a Friday. When you make a dumb mistake like I just did to go cut wires without thinking about the other parts that need to be connected. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. I messed up, guys. That's okay, though. So let me go get another solenoid. Yep. Is it new? Yeah. Hey, man. Shit happens. It's okay. All right, we put the new solenoid on there after our little solenoid mishap. We'll use this somewhere else. We'll go ahead and put the other connector on here that has to get connected to that. Screw them together. Got to get it in there straight. No. Nope. There we go. No. Nope. Why aren't you going in right? There we go. We'll go ahead and strip these back so we can get them ready for the butt connectors. And when I'm done here, I'll pull it back through on the other side. And yes, I'm going to cut these short, but now I have the wires through. I don't want them to be too long because then I'll pull it out on the other side over there. All right, spin these up so they go into the butt connectors clean. Let me not be stupid. I know some of y'all watching this going, he's going to forget. I almost did. All right. Well, that was just the gate door shutting behind me, giving me a small heart attack. Always pull back to make sure that the connection is good. All right. Now we can start to pull back on the other side up here, which will pull this wire back in. And there we go. We've got the low voltage to the valve connected, the high voltage connected. Now that's left to do is grab my screwdriver and start coiling wires. Now, I don't need but only the two wires. And instead of coiling all these wires individually, I'm gonna coil them all together. One big coil. So I don't need, because I'm not gonna use these. That will go there. And since this is a single zone system, we're not gonna wire it as a master valve, we're gonna wire it as the single zone. And this is how I coil all my wires. All right, now that we got those wired in, the next thing that we have to do is install the wireless rain sensor. We're gonna start with the receiver here. And we're gonna, drill a hole to mount it here and then I'm going to drill another little hole in the bottom of the controller right about there and then I'll run the wires to where they need to go. I'll show you what that looks like next. All right with our sensor mounted to the wall the hole drilled for the wire which by the way I drill exactly the same size hole as the wire so nothing's getting in there other than the wire. I'm going to connect the two red wires here to where these two yellow wires are up here at the 24 volts that gives this sensor power and then I'm gonna connect the white wire to the common connection here, and I'm gonna connect this brown wire to sensor one. It could be on sensor two, but there's only one sensor going in here, so I'm gonna put it on the first sensor. The yellow wire is only used if the circuit is normally open and you're using the sensor to close the circuit. We use the brown wire because the sensor is normally closed, and we want this brown wire to open the circuit or to break the circuit. But we're gonna go ahead and wire it up the way I just said. Here's a little great tip. When you're wiring it in for the power side, pull the actual wire out for the transformer, wrap the wire around the transformer wire, and then stick it back in. What that'll do is it'll make it so that wire doesn't easily get disconnected. If you just slide the wire under there by itself, it can pop right back out easy. So that's a little tip for you there. Let me finish installing this. All right, the rain sensor's installed. Just have to put this little sticker back. And I also want to point out that I used the sensor terminal block thing right here to push the extra wire back there to hold it in place. And that keeps everything nice and neat. All I have left to do now is put the panel on, turn on the breaker, power this up, and get it set up on HydroWise. And we're going to be good to go. This was the controller install video that you've all been waiting for. Here it is.